good morning, everybody, to um, this uh, meeting for TAC. And I'd like to welcome everybody. And I'm sure Briar's got attendance. She did tell me we have quorum today, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, can I have approval of the agenda, please? Tom Pate, seconder. Um, Jen Kyle, thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Um, declaration of procuring any interests. Does anybody have any conflicts? No? Good. Thank you. Delegations, petitions, presentations. I don't believe that we have any, so we'll carry on with that. Uh, next on the item of agenda is adoption of the minutes from the previous meeting, and that would be from January the 16th. And I hope everybody had a, a chance to read it. I had problems with my printer, so I got mine this morning. have a chance to read it any errors the only thing I saw was there's several places where um, member Potter's name is spelled incorrectly so it's two T's and so if somebody could fix that in there's several places where that's happened so if you could do that that would be great other than that can I have Motion to accept the minutes with that correction. Jen, thank you. Seconder, Mayor Bailey, thank you. All in favor? Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, business arising from the minutes. Any comments? Okay. Uh, new business. Grant celebrates. Thanks for having me. I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I know quite a few people around the table, um, but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kayla Cheechman, and I'm the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Officer uh, for the County of Brant. So it's a fairly new position. Uh, so I thought I would come here today to introduce myself um, because I'm sure I'll continue to work with this group quite often. Um, so I know we have the title of Brant Celebrates as my new business. Um, we're pivoting a little bit. We're gonna put that on the back burner for right now. Um, I was gonna to come today and talk a little bit about plans for that moving forward, um, but we've had a little bit of a shift. Um, I, it was announced yesterday that Russ Press will be stepping down from his position, for those of you who don't know. So we're just gonna take a little step back um, to evaluate how we wanna move forward with our programming and events for this year and really focus on our strategy. So I'm working on the Arts Culture Heritage Strategy and that will be launching very sh sorry, very soon. And I'll be looking to this group to be stakeholders on that development um, because there's a lot of things that align together and looking at what programs we wanna bring back, which new ones we're looking at doing for the community as well. Um, so I thought it would be good to come today and just introduce myself. Um, some of you might know me from the heritage side of things or the art side or culture. So. I wear a few different hats, um, so I will be that person moving forward, and I'll definitely be reaching out to this group in the future to try to figure out kind of what 2023 will look like for that type of programming. So thank you for having me today. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer, but I just really wanted to come and put my face forward and get to know this group a little bit more. Yes. Mayor Bailey. Uh, through the chair, uh, you're not going to tell us that's not going to happen, though, are you? No, that's not necessarily the case. I think we're just gonna, just for resourcing um, with the change, I'm not gonna announce what we're gonna do yet, um, but we're gonna take some time to evaluate what we can do for 2023. Right, because it, there's, a, there's a real appetite for it, there and uh, with, with the way things are moving in the county, it's one of those things we can't drop the ball on. Mm -hmm. um, we heard about it on Friday night, we've heard about it on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. with different groups of people, so. Uh, although I, I was sorry to hear that Russ was leaving, mm -hmm. uh, we can't drop major balls uh, mm -hmm. uh, just because we, we have a staffing change. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that that's you're not, you're not saying that it's not going to happen because it needs to happen. No, I, we're just going to evaluate through the strategy to see what scale we can do this year as well, um, and kind of see what the appetite is because I know with COVID. Um, there has been a shift to smaller scale, so we've been looking at maybe 
making an overarching grant celebrates that involves a few different pieces and community members. So yeah, I think it's good to give that evaluation and see what it's gonna look like for this year and then moving forward. I think I think you need to keep council connected to, yes, to, to sure. what you're planning because we, we get we get questions on it every day and okay, they're that's important good. questions from what I think are important people because mm -hmm. they're new groups of people that are coming to the county mm -hmm. and they're expecting something. They've heard about it mm -hmm. for four years and, mm -hmm. and, and they're expecting something. So mm -hmm. thank okay. you. Thank you. So Kayla, uh, can you give us a timeline then what, when you could present to us? Okay, yeah. what so you're we're working on the Arts Culture Heritage Strategy RFP right now to go out to a consultant. Um, so that's really what we're focusing on right now and that will be in the very near future and then that will help us evaluate what our programming looks like. So you perhaps could report at next month's meeting? It, yeah, that could be, we could give an update on where everything's at. Um, for resourcing for programming for this year. So. Yeah. Okay, because I, I don't want it to get lost. No, yeah. LA, did you have a question? Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one on new business is springtime in Paris, and I asked for that to be put on. Um, I actually got out a brochure from 1997 when it was much more simplified than it was at the end of its reign, I guess. And um, I have not heard through the grapevine if there is any group that is willing to take that on or a couple of groups that is willing to take that on. Um, I don't think that it should be something that is lost either uh, because it was an event in Ontario that people come from far and wide. It was a recognized event People looked forward to it, and it does give you that air of springtime in Paris. Um, I know some of the participants are carrying on with some of the things they did on that weekend. I know the Horticulture Society is still doing their garden tour, um, but they're doing it kind of a solo thing. But if anybody hears of an organization or a couple of organizations that could possibly work together to have it revitalized. I'm sure it's too late for this year to book certain things, but maybe it could be in the works for next year. Um, I know it is. it was done um, with the Optimist Club. I know the Kiwanis Club have done it. Um, I know there were a group of uh, like-minded individuals from the community that um, took it over from the Optimist Club, and the Optimist Club was a participant, but I think it is a valuable event that needs to have some kind of existence or life. I don't know. Anybody have a comment? Mayor Bailey? Again, through rumors, through you, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Chair, Mrs. Chair, Mrs. Stone, um, I had heard that maybe springtime in Paris might be combined with the other events that are coming up so that nothing gets lost and the name gets changed, but every all the components of everything we don't want to lose is at least addressed in one event. So that could be the, the one you're speaking of. Be, because there's, because there's, there, there tends to be a lot of events within six weeks. So it's time to maybe combine a couple, change the name of what it's called and what it does and what it's going to, what's going to happen at it, and make sure we don't lose the, the best parts of all of them. So that's, that's what I've heard on the street that people have suggested we do with Springtime in Paris. I, I know it was a nice family event. So, I mean, if that, I mean, at the park, family, it kind of was cohesive, that kind of thing. It was, it was a great event, actually. So, Donna. Through you, Madam Chair, I just wanted to say that uh, back to the survey results uh, from last summer, that was one of the more popular comments, was more family-oriented events, more events for children. So. Uh, maybe that fits in with, you know, what we're talking about here today, too. Okay. Just we don't want to lose it completely. We have to have some form of it, I think. Okay. Thank you. Um, I believe, Donna, you're speaking on the 55-plus games. Yes, thank you. So the 55-plus games are moving forward quite quickly. Uh, we have a signed uh, agreement from the province, so all of the money has been 
sent to the city of Brantford because they're the banker for the events. We are at 18 different sports. We have all of the locations signed, all of the accommodations are signed, and the website is live. We have not had a soft launch of the website yet. Um, we had to finish all of the translation because uh, everything has to be in French and English. But uh, the website is live now and they'll be coming out with a strong push for volunteers and uh, people can go on and register for the games. So we're pretty excited. The middle night event is uh, going to be at Lions Park. And we are right in the process now of doing uh, RFPs for uh, food and entertainment and that type of thing for our middle night event, which will have probably 14 to 1500 people. Um, so we're just working through the logistics of feeding that many people at uh, a given time and ensuring that there's entertainment and also trying to work at a program where they can you know, come into at least the downtown core throughout their visit here and see some of the elements that uh, the County of Brant has to offer. We are also putting together, or we have already put together stay and play packages that are part of the 55 plus games. So when people are coming with their significant other to the games, which many of them do, uh, they can stay before or after and uh, do some of the things uh, that we have to offer in the County of Brant. We have weekly meetings with the ministry and with the city of Brantford on the games. Uh, we're working through a number of different uh, uh, areas with the games. I'm involved as the co-chair. I'm also involved in sponsorships. So I have received the sponsorship package from our legal department and from the city's legal department. So we're now ready to uh, go out and seek sponsors for the event, both in kind and dollar sponsorship. Uh, so I'm just working on that right now. and. Uh, Everything is, is moving along rather quickly for it. The games are again August 9th to the 11th, and we will be wanting to ensure that we can showcase the County of Brant as best as possible while the games, or while the athletes are here in the, in the location on the middle night event. So we will be in touch with many of our partners throughout the next few months to make sure that happens. Can I ask which facilities in Brant County are being used for the games? So we have five different sports for the games. Uh, we are using Scotland Community Centre, Canesville Community Centre, uh, Paris High School. Uh, we're using uh, the park up uh, on Park Lane through Dwayne, sorry, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, we're using that for volleyball. Um, where they have the dog park and the soccer fields and oh, Green Lane. Green Lane, yes. Okay. Uh, we're using that for volleyball. Uh, uh, our lawn bowling here, we're also doing bocce in the County of Brant, and we're also using our arena for hockey. Great. We're also using uh, Five Oaks for accommodations for teams, and we're using the Arlington. The Arlington is a little tougher because it's summer months and they're very, very busy with weddings. Uh, we may not be able to get very many rooms there, but they definitely are on the website for rooms. Uh, when we're working with the food, I don't know which restaurants, it depends on who comes back with the RFP, but many of our restaurants will be involved as well, uh, setting up booths or having uh, part of the contract for food for the event. So. Um, you're on again, Donna. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Well, for the 55 plus games, uh, we are sharing on transportation. She was asking to put your mic on. Uh, but we'll be sharing our transportation. We are offering in-kind transportation with our uh, Brant rides, and the city is offering transportation with their buses. Now, not all athletes will use that transportation. Some of them come with their spouses. Some of them are local and will be driving themselves. But for the most part, transportation to and from all of the sports locations and all of the events that are covered by the 55 plus games, we have transportation provided with our buses. Anybody else have a question? No? Okay, thank you. 
Um, next up is um, you again, Donna, with the DISC tournament. So the County of Grant just won the bid for the Ontario DISC Golf Championships. Uh, in the County of Grant, they'll be held in Paris up at Green Lane again. Uh, I don't have an exact date for the games or for the event yet, but it's uh, the first time that we have hosted and they're very excited to be uh, planning this event and I'm working with the, the small committee to ensure that all of their accommodations are booked and again that they're taking in as much of the county as they possibly can while they're here for the tournament. They expect between 70 and 100 athletes for that. so. Pretty excited to be hosting that in Paris this summer. I, they haven't confirmed a date yet because it depends on other tournaments and and uh, the successors of those tournaments and who wins as to when we have ours. But uh, it's later in the summer, probably August. Not when the uh, no. fifty-five plus. No, <laughs> no. Yes. Okay. We've already told them that uh, yeah. there are no rooms available anywhere <laughs> during that week. Perfect. Um, the next one up is you again, and it's the Ontario Small Urban Municipalities Conference. So OSM, or the Ontario Small Urban Municipalities Conference, uh, is set for April 26th to the 28th. Their golf tournament is on April 26th. They will have about 50 golfers, and that is being held at the Burford Golf Course. Uh, they were just, their executive, were just here last Friday, and we did a progressive dinner starting at the Arlington. The executive stayed at the Arlington. There was 15 of them, and we had a very bad snowstorm up in the north, so two people couldn't attend, but uh, it was quite cold, but everybody was dressed warm and excited to take part. We started with a photo on the bridge, and it was funny because when you talk about people that are not local, the first thing they did was walk out into the middle of the road to get a better picture. <laughs> so Jan hurtled them back onto the sidewalk and said, hey, I can take a good picture from here. I've done it many times. I know how to do it. So she took the picture from the sidewalk on the bridge, um, talked about the dam. Then we went to Chocolate Sensations, and uh, I was just amazed with Taylor, the young daughter at Chocolate Sensations. She made us bonbons, and it takes two to three days, if you didn't know this, to make those bonbons. They actually polish them. I didn't know that either. They were amazing, these little chocolates that looked like marble and looked like jewelry. You didn't want to eat them, but they were absolutely phenomenal. They talked quite a bit about the history and uh, where the family has come from, built or, uh, making chocolate-dipped licorice in their basement to take to fairs, to now having two full stores and a full production company and over 350 products that they sell in their stores and online. Uh, people were very, very interested and lots bought many of their chocolate items. Uh, we went to Aripa Love, Aripa Love, and thank you so much to both of you for attending. We had a wonderful uh, appetizer there and uh, different drinks. I think we had a mojito and a gin fizz or something like that. It was quite good. Um, and two types of appetizers with different, different, six different sauces. And everyone just absolutely loved it. And he, they talked about what their plans are for the summer, offering karaoke and offer some dancing and their patio lanterns and different things that they're planning on doing with their business. Then we went to, all while having a tour, we went to Paris Beer Company, had a wonderful dinner, wonderful dessert, and then went into Wincy Mills and talked there, and then did a tour on the way back and talked about Cobblestone and uh, some of the smaller businesses that started out, say, in Wincy Mills and now have grown to having their own storefronts. Went back to the Arlington and each of them stayed overnight and then we hosted the executive meeting here in this office uh, on the Saturday morning and I set up shopping uh, excursions for the spouses and uh, for them after our meeting which was from 9 to 12. They left at the end of the day but during the meeting they asked for two more things because with this conference they're staying at the Hampton and the Town Place Suites by Marriott which are not County of Grant accommodations. Uh, we are also using the Arlington, but there is only 23 rooms there. Um, their conference has grown, so I may even have to take another hotel in, in uh, uh, the other end of Brantford, which would be the Home Two Suites, um, to try and make sure that we have enough accommodations for everyone. We're not offering a hybrid 
option for the conference, but what they wanted to add was a night out in Paris for their entire conference because they really loved the time that they spent here last Friday. So they are going to offer that uh, for people to sign up for that, so I have to work on a program for them during the conference. And they're also doing uh, um, a panel discussion, and they have asked myself and other members within the county to sit on the panel and talk about small town tourism and agriculture as well. And they also um, would like to do a study tour, much like the Agri Conference did last fall. They have not done this before, but they were very impressed with our communities and wanted to possibly do uh, an agri tour as part of their conference for a busload of people. So it has grown from, you know, uh, just offering accommodations and a location for their conference to now being very, very involved in the conference. So, uh, and it's all municipal leaders from across Ontario. So we're pretty excited to be hosting the conference and as much as we can possibly get is happening in the county. If we had accommodations, we'd have everything. So we're pretty excited about that. They expect about 170 to 200 guests and uh, registration is live. A press release went out, I think last Monday, about the conference, and uh, um, Mayor Bailey, I am to get a letter to you to hopefully uh, pass on to our council members so that they may wish to attend the conference as well. So I will definitely be doing that. So we're pretty excited about that. It's a lot of work, so I'm, I've been pretty busy with that, but last weekend they had an absolute phenomenal time, so thank you so much again for coming out and, and sharing stories and chatting with everyone and spending time with us and they they really enjoyed themselves. So. Kudos to you for expanding it outside of an, a building and a meeting room. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's important, very important. But what I'm hearing is um, we don't have accommodation. Um, so it's a huge issue I think if we keep encouraging people to come um, and host various conferences or, or sports or whatever um, that we don't have accommodation. And I don't know if maybe Mayor Bailey can answer this. Is there any plans um, for any development of a hotel in the county of Brant that could service this void? I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking. Through, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, not really just because the only proposal that's come to us is uh, right by the Winston Mills, which is too big and too much. It just it's just wouldn't be a clever thing for the county to do. The whole downtown's going to fall in one of these days if we keep building big buildings on corners or where two rivers meet. So um, because the other hotels, though, that you say aren't in the county, they're so close, um, it, it's just really a technicality that it's not. They're not in the county. They're very convenient. And they're very, um, they support the county. The owners of the buildings support the county every chance they get. So to say we don't have accommodation is, is true, but it's only as far as the old schoolhouse to get them. And uh, sometimes not owning something but getting the use out of them is a far better economical choice. Uh, very much like the Humane Society that's coming. It's going to be the Brant County Humane Society, which is going to be right in that same area and it's going to be paid for by the city, and it's going to look like it belongs to us. So although we don't have any anything, uh, we, we have to worry about social housing long before we have to worry about putting people up for weekends, for conferences. We, we have nothing nothing in the works right now. Okay, thank you. I'm, it, I'm just wondering, is there an arrangement with our transportation then that could provide people from those hotels to bring them to here? Is there a reciprocal kind of arrangement for that or no? Yeah, we could do that through our own or we could do that through sharp bus lines. We could do something. We could we could even wrap a couple of buses. I mean, for the price of wrapping a bus to make it look very exclusive to the event, to the conference. I mean, to wrap a bus, we used to do it at the Boys and Girls Club. If we had an event, we'd wrap the whole van and it would look just like it was the van that belonged to that event. Um, so it's not that expensive if you were to wrap two vans and shuttle them back and forth. We could almost do that with Apple Fest now, it's so big. But uh, we, we could do that, that's for sure. And I don't know whether it's too late to get something together for all of our bed and breakfasts. We, we do have uh, an inventory of bed and breakfasts. We do. 
um, in the county, and and even asking people like me who have enough. I have six bedrooms. I mean, I I could do something if I were asked with enough time. I could put up some of the executive. Um, there's lots of people that could get involved. I think if they knew there was a need for something. No different than when you have a hockey tournament and they have you, host you families and they have host families, right? But it, the process to do that—that's and it takes a little bit of organization and time. But yeah, I, I just feel bad that we're bringing these people to showcase our area and, and not here. They but, would never know those hotels weren't ours because there's the old school house, and then there's you know the Ben Mar, the old school house. You turn right, yeah, you turn left. True. There's two big hotels. They're really much closer to the county than they are to the city. True. So unless we told them they weren't ours, nobody would know they weren't. Which is why I chose those. Um, we uh, And they do, like Mayor Bailey said, they do work with us. And they understood um, because actually OSIM was going to send their executive out there this past weekend. And I said, no, if at all possible, can you please go you know, to the Arlington? Um, they just were going to go there because that's where their meeting is in April. And uh, the Hampton... Uh, I know Danny quite well, and their sales manager, and they understood that I was taking that business back away from them and bringing it back to the Arlington. So uh, they work with me all the time. Uh, they provide me with uh, donations when I'm going to trade shows. They've provided me with donations for Apple Fest and for the fair. So uh, I try okay. and work with them reciprocally as much as possible. And that's what you need, right? Yep. You have to have mm -hmm. partners to make it work. So, okay, that's good. Thank you. But Mayor Bailey, they would have loved to stay at your house because the last time we did the OSIM dinner, um, they kept saying, do we get to go by the mayor's house again? Do we get to go by the mayor's house again? So if I knew you had six bedrooms, I could have put them up there. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Just be careful what you wish for. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, Donna, staff update. So I guess um, some of us found out this morning about Russ um, shifting gears, and uh, we want to wish him all the best. And do you know when that takes effect? His 24th is his last day here with the County of Grants. And for those of you uh, that didn't get the press release, he is actually moving on to Another dream job, because this was his dream job, he has a passion, a very big passion for wine. And I'm not saying that because he drinks a lot of wine, because he doesn't, but he knows all about wine, wants to learn all about wine, and he loves special events. So he was, uh, they, they seduced him or came after him, and he was offered a position as general manager of the Burning Kiln Winery. So he is very excited to move on to this next chapter, very sad to be leaving this one. We as staff were very shocked yesterday. <laughs> I, I know I was. Um, uh, I thought he would be a lifer. So, um, but I'm very happy for him and very excited that he's going to be able to pursue his passion. But he is away at Edco this week. Next week he is in Cuba, which was already planned long before this. Then it's family day, so he's actually only in the office from like the 21st to the 24th. We are having a get-together. I don't have any other information, but it is February 23rd, and Danny's working on it. So as soon as I have more information, I will make sure that uh, this committee knows about it for sure. That would be good. Mm -hmm. We'll share that, um, whether it's during the day or evening or whatever. So thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, communications? None, Brian? Other business? Um, I have, I have oh, some, I'm sorry. I have something for other business. Okay. Um, I'm, I had dinner with um, the Paris and District Chamber of Commer Commerce on Friday night. And um, we have a problem with the way things are running here at the county as far as the, um, the introductions to the new businesses to our chamber. So what, what we want to try to do is we want to try to... Um, I don't know whose job it's going to be, whether it's going to be a new job or whether we have to give it to someone, but when every business is going is coming to the county at any stage, whether it's new build or whether it's leasing or renting or however they're getting here, we need to know um, we need to know when they're opening their store so that the mayor can be there, the chamber can be there, and other maybe they, maybe the councillors from that ward can be there. But what's happening is we're finding when we go to cut the ribbon, when I go to cut the ribbon, um, I'm already seeing chamber uh, information from the city. 
So somehow the city has got it together better than we do, and uh, the city chamber of commerce, Brantford chamber of commerce, is getting in there before we do, and it's not right and it's not fair. Um, so we we need to uh, we need to have a, a group almost like a welcome wagon, uh, where the mayor goes and we cut you know we make a big deal for them. We cut we get their ribbon, we we get their picture, we introduce them to our chamber, we let them know the difference between the two chambers because. Uh, when we do tell them about it, um, because we did tell two businesses last week when we asked them if they wanted to join the chamber, they said we already have, and we explained to them that they, they joined the wrong one. They were, they were embarrassed, more embarrassed than we were. We're not embarrassed at all because we're, we should be embarrassed that we didn't get the process to them in time. But they both obviously dropped the city and, and took out membership with the county. So it's not something they don't want to do. It's something they don't know that's out there. And the chamber in Brantford, for some reason, is right on the ball. And when I say that, I, I mean I don't know what their connection is. I don't know what their process is, but they're getting there before we are. So I don't know whose job that is. I, I, I'm looking around the room hoping somebody put, puts up their hand, but it's not my job. But, but I certainly do feel that we're missing, we're missing the boat to get the news to the new people right away that there's a chamber that should be there when I cut the ribbon to give them help and support. So when a new business comes to the county, whether it's a new build or a lease or a rent or whatever, are you not aware of that? Like, how, What's that process? I'm only aware if they ask me to help in the opening of their building. So if they, they do a request, there's a part on our website where if you want the mayor to be there to open your business, you just say so. I come with my little scissors and my little certificate, and I do the formality. They get a picture which hangs in their store, and uh, but that's only if they want me there. But I think instead of asking them if they want me there, we should, as a county, First. offer a, a package which the where the mayor would come and the chamber would come. You could meet your counselors, and it could almost be like a welcome wagon without Tupperware. In reverse, really, instead of them approaching yes, you, we, you should we should be approaching them. But so uh, there has there's a disconnect to find out then when and where somebody is coming, except when it's taxation time, right? Where where you have to pay your business tax. I don't well, the magic of the county is the rumors and the scuttlebutt. I mean, we all know stuff we're not supposed to know. So we all know something's happening. When the paper goes on a window, you know something's going to be behind the paper someday soon. So, I mean, we, we could do that with just local people. I'm not going to say the busybodies, but I'm going to say the people that walk the streets in all the different parts of the county. There are people in Scotland and Oakland and Hereford and St. George and, and Paris that know stuff, know stuff first. And we should find out who those people are and, and maybe get them on board as a, as a SWAT team. <laughs> informants, we, informants. We, we, we need, we, I think everyone knows a little bit about something, but we need a, a final process or a formal process because I know counselors that have never met people that have restaurants in their in their wards, and that's not right. If, if you've got a new business and something goes wrong and you've got a problem or your funding is wrong or they're wondering about bylaw, they should know. The first two people they should know are their counselors. And they, I have, I have counselors that don't know who owns what, and that's not right. So would that be something, an education piece, that when a counselor is um, elected into that position, that they, that's part of their mandate that they find no, out? No, no, they're too busy. They're, counselors are still part-time people. True. You know, people are on combines and, and, and office buildings and in conferences all day long. I'm the only full-time employee of council. So, I mean, I've got all day to find out, but I'm not, I'm, I haven't got the time to be looking in every window in the county of Brant to find out how close somebody is to opening. It's not my job. No. But it's somebody's job. It's somebody's job to be, a, you know, to, to know something. Through you, Madam Chair, I do know that uh, when economic development is involved uh, and it, they're allowed to say something, that they could ensure, uh, as part of the communication piece, that you know. So that uh, you know that would definitely help. I can talk to Zach and, and make sure that uh, 
you know, any plans that he's involved with, with new business and things like that, um, as soon as he's allowed to say something, that you are part of the first communication that you know. But even through you, Madam Chair, even through even before we should know, because I, I, I realize there's a little bit of secrecy to everything uh, until you start. To, but maybe it could be something Jack or Zach gives to them. It right. says, you know, when your store does open or when you finally get a, uh, you know, this this is what can happen if you want. And then there could be even check marks. Like you want the mayor, but you don't want the council, or you want the council, but you don't want the mayor. But they'd be interested in the chamber. Um, I think the chamber would help uh, finance that too, because they're they're a little embarrassed that they're running a little bit behind the eight ball to the city. They try very hard to do the county first, and then when they finally get there, they say, "Oh, well, you know, I'm Susan Morton, and I'm the president of your chamber." And they say, "Oh, yeah, Susan, nice to meet you. We joined last week." And she'll say, "No, you didn't." And they're going to say, yeah, we did. We talked to David Fang. They're going to say, we don't know David Fang. So, so it's, really, it's really quite embarrassing for new people because yep. they don't know the politics of the way things are. I will definitely take this to Zach. Thanks. No problem. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I was going to mention, um, I should back up first because I thought that the staff update was progress, but Donna just said there's more to it, so I apologize. <laughs> uh, with the staff update, I'm going to ask Kayla to, to maybe give her own. That would be great. Then I'm not talking the whole time. <laughs> sure. So, um, and, and to go back to what you were speaking about, uh, Mayor Bailey, in our staff meeting last week, I asked Russ, I said, you know, I'm giving updates to the Tourism Advisory Committee from our staff. Should I be, should I be asking for updates uh, from the Chamber and the BIA? And uh, yes, we're going to start giving just, just a high-level update of what they're working on so that you have that information at this committee as well. Um, Digital Main Street is still open to business, and we're looking to fund looking to give funding and improve their digital presence. So um, I explained at the last committee meeting or tourism advisory committee meeting that uh, we've uh, had over 130 businesses that we've assisted with Digital Main Street and we are uh, continuing to do that. They receive a $2,500 grant and assistance from a contract staff person that we have to help them with their digital presence. and. Uh, so he's working, I think he said last week that he's working on eight or nine businesses right now. Um, so he will be working on that through the spring. Um, right now we're working on the recruitment of our visitor, visitor ambassador for this year. Um, with that, it's been a little bit different because I've had to do a study on how busy Wincy Mills is and how busy... Um, uh, things are in the downtown core to make sure that we're staffing the visitor booth uh, at the busiest times to ensure that we're providing information on things to see and do. I've done research on a number of all a number of other small town uh, visitor centers and and what they do to help visitors. So we're going to try and streamline and change that a little bit with our visitor center. Uh, but that student will be starting in the spring. We do uh, I think we get up to four students, not for visitor ambassador, but. We get four summer students for different areas uh, with tourism, so I'll be working with the visitor ambassador for this summer. Uh, we have given our final report for the Hamilton Halton grant funding that we received last year. Uh, in the report that I gave you last month, we received $96,000 from uh, the Tourism Relief Fund grant last fall, and that all went to sustainability tourism. So basically, uh, it went to our cycling, uh, our uh, biking trails, um, racks, uh, better signage, uh, more washrooms along the trails and along the water's edge and things like that. Um, so that had to be finished as of December 31st. So our final report has been sent in for that. Uh, special events and filming Branford Brandt uh, Special Olympics Polar Plunge happened on February 4th. Did anybody here do the plunge? No? <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> uh, five more events are in the works, which are the Paris Maple Syrup Festival, the Paris An Ancaster Bicycle Race, the Grand Ducky Race Ride, 
uh, and the Ride with Fire and an Easter egg hunt. So uh, we're working on a number of special events right now. We have two filming inquiries. One is local and one is van from Vancouver. And uh, I've already talked about the Ontario 55 Plus Games, which is another special event that will be happening in August. With tourism, I talked about the uh, OSAB dinner. I talked about the executive meeting. Uh, on the table, you have our newest catalogs for shopping and culinary. Um, these were printed uh, and designed at the end of last year. Uh, as soon as we put these guides out, we get people calling saying, could I add my business? And we can only print them once or twice a year, obviously. This was a big reprint. Um, the last one was on the shelves for over a year, but we had a number of new businesses and changes within both of these guides. And we do the updates right away online, but the print version we can't do until we do the next, uh, the next catalog. So this is the newest catalog as of the end of December last year. We printed 5,000 of them. They are at all the community centers and they are slowly being distributed to uh, all of the high traffic tourist locations right now. Um, and then we'll be getting them out to all of our locations uh, by the start of the spring season with tourism. So uh, a lot of changes in it. A uh, number of businesses have changed hands or closed and new businesses in town, but uh, they are still very popular and I have had, I get calls probably every week on people wanting to be included in the guides. So these two are new and the next one will be, yes, sorry. Through you, Madam Chair, um, when is your dates to print those so that I can forward that information to the BIA membership? Now that we just printed them at the end of last year, they will be annually. Um, the destination guide is more of a experience guide and a number of the products that are in the destination guide are in other guides. The destination guide just allows us to create leisure packages. So these are the top two guides that will be completed on an annual basis and the other one would be the farm guide. So do you have like a month that you usually try and get all of that, all your assets together to be able to print these? I start in the fall, probably around October, November, because it's really difficult to get anyone to give me information because they're so busy in the summer months, um, with printing in November and December. So Donna, if you could keep in contact with me and then I can forward that information to the BIA membership to give them a heads up to make sure everything, all the assets are accurate and, and on time. Absolutely. That'd be great. Thank you. I'm not sure how you mean in this, are you talking about AOAD compliance in the printing of this, like the size of fonts and things like that? We, we are AODA compliant with our printing and our font size and... Okay. Maybe asking Donna, could could the guide have maybe the wheelchair accessible um, symbol beside their um, um, print so that people would know that it is wheelchair accessible, which would help um, somebody who is um, challenged uh, with either a walker or a wheelchair, and even people that are pushing strollers. Like it's a very difficult. Um, and unfortunately, I've experienced all three things, strollers, wheelchairs, and walkers. It is very difficult to get doors to open and you're trying to get in if it isn't accessible. So maybe just that little wheelchair symbol beside would be helpful. Uh, just a suggestion. It can certainly be something my student can start working on in the summer. The concern I have is if my student calls one of these businesses and says, are you accessible? Uh, or age compliant, they're going to say yes, but are they? You know, so, um, and, and if they say yes and I put the wheelchair beside their business and then someone goes, you know, with a wheelchair and tries to go to it and they can't open the door and they can't get in, 
Yes. Yeah. Having said that, I, I was walking my grandson yesterday in one of the new surveys, and one side of the sidewalk to go to the street was completely bare, but the one across the street was all this ice and stuff in it. He was slipping, I was slipping, and I was like, oh my God, if I fall and he, he's, he's 18 months, he's going to take off on me. And it was like, ah, this wasn't a good plan. So I do understand where you're coming from. I, I know one of the restaurants, the washroom is upstairs. So uh, if you have mobility issues, you shouldn't go there. <laughs> Um, because you can't access the washroom if you have a mobility issue. Just, and it's not fair to them either. So I think what I would need to do for businesses as part of this to help you would be to find out what those um, parameters are and ensure that we have those in writing and that's what my student sends out to say that restaurant to say, do you, you, know, do you fit all of these requirements? And then we would put the wheelchair sign or whatever beside their, their business. So I think it goes a little bit higher than that. But I'm going to find out more information and have more answers for you at the next meeting, if that's OK. Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. Does that help? Uh, OK. OK. And, and that's not, I don't think that's too hard to no. put a little symbol after you've investigated that they truly are age friendly. OK. Um, so uh, I just recently attended uh, the Tourism Industry of Ontario Sustainable Strategic Development Program. Uh, we applied for the County of Grant to be part of one of four small communities that may be selected to have the Tourism Industry of Ontario help us to create a sustainable strategic plan. There's a lot of S's in there, sorry. So uh, that was a, a two-day uh, workshop that I attended last month. So we're hoping that we are selected as one of the small communities to take part in that. And I will let this group know as we move forward with that. Um, I just wanted to say just one more thing that I forgot to say with the 55 plus games. You're, we are supposed to host a 100 day out event. We are changing that to be hosting a 99-day out event to coincide with 99 in the city of Brantford. Um, also, council have meetings uh, all day on the 100-day out, so it was a better date to host it on the 99-day out. So that is May 3rd, and I believe Mayor Bailey has already been approached to be a part of that event. Um, and I will have more information by next month to give to everyone else to... Uh, to possibly attend that event, which will be held at the Beckett Building in Brantford. And I'm going to let Kayla talk about her section so I don't have to talk anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Um, all right, so a little bit of an update from me. Um, so the Heritage Committee has returned. We had our first meeting this month. Um, and one exciting piece that's coming out of that is we have an intention to designate the Paris Plain Cemetery, and that is moving forward. Um, another thing that I mentioned earlier is our arts, culture, and heritage strategy will be launched shortly, and I'll keep this group updated on that um, and be reaching out to you guys as stakeholders. Uh, the other thing that I've been working on the last few months and will continue to work on is streamlining the filming process, so making it a little bit easier, um, connected with our businesses, with our community, and really showing the benefits. Um, and like Donna had mentioned, we have a few film uh, crews that are interested in filming here, so just working on making that a little bit more of an efficient, um, well-oiled process. Uh, the other thing that kind of connects with what I was talking to earlier is just assisting cultural and creative groups for planning and programming events for 2023. So there's a lot of great creativity and ideas all around the community, so really trying to help uh, bring those together to make sure we have those best programs coming back or new ones starting for 2023. And then another big piece that I'm working on is working on digital pieces for arts, culture, heritage, communication, and making sure everybody knows where to go when they need help, um, being able to communicate with each other, having a really clear website, having an engage page for when we get um, the strategy launched, um, and also working on a program that I have started to create, um, a digital platform called The Heart of Grant, 
which will be able to house a lot of the stories um, beyond just social media platform, but really get into the stories of the community and have a place to share. So lots of exciting things going on for the year, and I'll keep looking to this group throughout um, the process. So thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Okay. Um, one of the things that I mentioned um, at our last meeting was that new porch group. And um, there were four of us who did attend that meeting. Um, that was um, in January. And Catherine was there, Jim was there, um, Lucas Oakley was there, and myself was there. And it was very informative. Um, there was a good turnout. There is another meeting up coming up with that group next Thursday, and it's at Syllabs. Um, and two things that came out of that meeting repetitively was the lack of communication in the county. Repetitively, repetitively, no communication. And I'm saying that um, by the time some of the newcomers to the area find out about it, the event has already happened, or the event is sold out, or um, it's reported in the paper or by word of mouth, oh, we had a really good time at whatever, and they knew nothing about it. So um, that was huge, 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 huge. And the other big piece was where to meet without a cost, because people's homes aren't large enough to host a meeting, maybe for a group this size, perhaps, yes, but if you are an organization who you can't afford to pay $100 or $150 to have a meeting, and there is nowhere to have um, meetings. So one of the things they asked for for this upcoming meeting is if anybody had a list of um, locations for meetings in the county, and I did get the county brochure. Um, and my task was to uh, search out the hub and find out in that new community room um, about how you book that, and that's through Lisa, and yes, there is a cost as well, and how many people it can hold and all that. So I will report back to that group with that, but that is a big concern with newcomers is there's they don't find out about stuff until it's full or it's already sold out. And we were, I guess we'll talk about that at the next meeting. They're, they're going to have this meeting on Thursday. Um, they said it shouldn't just be um, digital. It shouldn't just be. There has to be some way of letting the community know other than only electronically. And so I, don't, I know everybody says that print is very expensive, but if that's how you have to reach some people in the community to make it inclusive, then I think that needs to be something that happens. And that's just my own personal comments. Mayor Bailey. Okay, first of all, um, I was going to say, what, what are their suggestions? Though? Is, is it print material they're, they're waiting to see in their mailbox? Do they want a flyer? Do they want to? That's going to come out at the next meeting, I'm sure. Catherine was at that meeting. Maybe Catherine can, can say something to it. It was very informative. Yeah, it was. I highly recommend everybody try and get out to one of them because it, it um, represents a lot of the newcomers to the community as well as people that have been here as long as I have and business owners and councilmen and a plethora of people. Um, so they were suggesting that we do a, a digital directory. So something that people that are you know, tech savvy, they can go on, they can see everything. And we've discussed this in the BIA that we need to have more like collaborative cohesion between the county and the BIA and like everybody. Just so we have, we were talking about the, the Chamber of Commerce, same deal. Like it needs to be very cohesive. And I think we're lacking that because there's, everything's very segmented. Um, so yeah, one of their um, suggestions was a digital directory and the print. So perhaps a community board, going back to the old fashioned, what I came from that generation, uh, a community board. I know we have one in the library, but they're very specific on what they're allowed to hang. Um, something perhaps in the park. Um, we have one just outside of 
um, on my street where I have my business, just outside of um, Sylvan Co., like the chiropractic office, they have a little locked up memo uh, thing. Um, but that can only house two, two little pieces at a time. So um, yeah, we could talk about maybe doing something downtown so that we have tourists and locals feeling like they could check it out. Perhaps I could even house something at the gallery just in the alcove. Um, I, I get that you can't hang things on um, telephone poles anymore, and I understand why. But um, yeah, the, the communication piece. Oh, sorry, Joe? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we remember what the 90s looked like, right? With all the telephone poles, with the flyers and such. So yeah, that's what they brought up the collaboration and communication piece. Which group was this at? This was the Corch, the new group that was started um, in December or November. And it was a group of, I, I wasn't at the first meeting. I only attended the second meeting. And I found out about it um, in the Ferris Independent. And you registered to go. It And it was, they, uh, they had, um, their format was, okay, when they first started out, have you lived in Paris less than two years? You raised your hand. Have you been here five years, ten years, lifer, whatever? So there was a huge cross-section of people who attended that have been here as brand newcomers, came through the pandemic, have been here only six months to people that have been lifers. And trying to have those groups of people be able to share their knowledge. So, for instance, they had a board. And from the printed um, piece of paper that they had from their first meeting, did anybody notice in this group that was there present that day what other groups, whether they were um, nonprofit, whether they were businesses that were missed in that first listing? They're, they filled two Bristol boards of businesses and organizations that the first group of people who attended didn't even think of. So. I know I put down half a dozen things just of my own personal knowledge that were missing from it. So it was open communication to try and have one resource spot that listed everything. And the other thing is that certain groups, as Catherine said, are silos and they don't um, consider perhaps that they're overlapping um, the same thing or that their event is the same day and so instead of everybody being successful you're only partially successful because they're on top of each other and perhaps there should be discussion and could you adjust it by a day or in a performance if you're sold out and there's more people are interested once they find out about it could you add a second performance or whatever that was kind of the gist. Um, sorry, Catherine, go ahead. It's, oh, it's okay. Jim? Turn your mic on, Jim. Thank you. Uh, this, this has partially been developed over a four or five year period through the ABCD development plan conference. Uh, it's kind of goes through uh, community living a little bit, and then the community living, uh, people who are not part of community living, they're just part of the community, uh, they kind of recruit themselves to, together and uh, have a strategy for their neighborhood, and uh, they are developing symposiums and ways of communicating better with, uh, about stuff that people want to be communicated about and what is in their community so they know what's in their community. It's a quite a knowledge-based development thing, but it's been going on for, for close to four or five years now, and um, this is the latest thing, so. Uh, Was it not part of Belonging Brant? Yes. Um, is how, how it was presented a, to a, us, Belonging Brant. ABCD has become Belonging Brant. Okay. That, that's what's happened with it. So I know that sounds a little confusing, but. It's been in place a long time now, and uh, I've been to some of the symposiums, and uh, they were really good, like the community-based things. They had drum marches and all kinds of stuff. So it's a real community roots thing, 
the, the one thing they were suggesting is perhaps there could be some um, one print, um, and I know it's fluid because things get added all the time, but maybe done on a monthly basis, what's upcoming, and, and have it um, either in a print form or a board form or various strategic places. If you want to find out what's going on, check, check the information board or some way of communicating other than just digitally because people aren't finding out. Catherine. Um, something that we discussed in the BIA, um, having kind of that, that cohesion again with everyone um, because of the double bookings and all of the, the factors that you were discussing, is having um, like a, a, you guys have a county calendar for events, but it usually just covers the county based or co county originated um, events and it doesn't really incorporate all the small businesses that are going on or not-for-profits, because I wouldn't have heard of Porch until we discussed it here. Um, but yeah, we were talking about having a county calendar that you could find on the website, and then possibly having a couple screens throughout downtown, and not necessarily outdoor screens, like something maybe in Wincy, where you have like a, a TV screen, where, you, you know, where it's, it's on there, because that's kind of a, a main source destination for having tourism information anyway, so it kind of mentally makes sense. Um, and then that way you don't have to worry about the cost of print, because they need something, the whole concept of having print is something tangible that they can see, that if they can't access it technically, then they can still, it still makes it accessible. So having a, a digital screen that's like a TV screen where they can see everything, like a bus terminal, I think I'm getting my point across. Um, yeah, something of that sort. Uh, yeah. It was, a, it was a good meeting. Like I said, the next meeting is at SOF's uh, next Thursday, February the 16th, 7 till 9. Um, 4 to 7, isn't it? No, 7 till 9. Seven. Was this first meeting a virtual meeting? No. Actually? It was a real meeting. It was a physical meeting. The first meeting was held um, at... Oh, my goodness, where did they meet? Oh, they met at the hub for the first meeting in mm -hmm. that community room. The second meeting was at Lafarge, and the third meeting is at Silaps. And was there counselors there, and was there staff there? Lucas was there, and, um, sorry, John no. Bell was there. Um, Lucas? Lucas was there, John Bell was there, and there was um, a staff member there, Jen. Emily. Emily. Yes. Emily was there. Okay. Uh, the BIA, BIA too is part of that package we want for the mayor and the chamber thing. I just I I I, 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 I just did, I just didn't say it, but it, it it would be everyone that that business would need to know the minute they open their door. So I mean I, I just sort of Yeah. So that that would be all the all the people they would know. That way they could call them and get the right plumber, the right electrician because they're new so they don't know anybody they don't so, know. so they no, and, but back to this the information piece it, it, is this something that you're expecting the county to do is this something that you want the county you want the county to it's a need It's just that it's coming. It's coming to us through council and the mayor, uh, because don't forget, there's different there's different uh, silos. There's the churches, and the churches all have events. They have bazaars, and they sell pickles, and they have singing, and now they have acting, and now they have performances, and they have everything. The churches is their own little world, and it's, it goes from Newport to, you know, from Newport to Onondaga, right to Harley, and. and and Harrisburg. So I mean, it's it's every part of the county. That's just churches. Yep. And then we have um, recreational stuff. And there's volleyball and basketball and tetherball and pickleball and all kinds of balls and all kinds of rackets and all kinds of clubs. And that's another piece. And then there's social stuff. Social. So there's age friendly. There's Ludi, Lucy Marco and all. You know. But how do these people find out about it? Because well, some of the old timers don't even yeah, know what's going on. What I'm on. saying, though, it's so big now. It's so big. And then there's the commerce part of it, the stores and the beer, the breweries and the restaurants. And it's like, yikes, how big does it get and how does the county handle it? So if you want it to be a, if you want the county to try to do something, 
and I can see it like a bus terminal, or I can picture the airport, and you, you know, the, the, the magic of an airport is when something gets canceled, it just disappears, and a new time comes up. So the days of whiteboards and chalk and brushes and all that nonsense is gone. Absolutely. So it needs to be something electronic that we can just type in, you know, uh, Presbyterian Church show tonight canceled due to weather, rescheduled Monday, February 13th. It has to be done like that. And it has to be so big. It has to be such a big process because there's got to be a place where you can scroll down and find out religion, churches. And then you've got to go to economic development. And then you've got to go to farming. You've got to go to agriculture and find out that the Miller's farm is closed because they have COVID and that everything's going to be done at the Howell farm. And it, it's got to get big. To get right, it needs to get big or it needs to be done by individual pockets of people. But if you want the county to do it, it's an investment. But I mean, I'm not saying that investment's not available and it's not a good idea. We could have something, I mean, on one of these walls, and we could have something at Wincy Mills. We could even have something as basic as just a screen, like you said, downtown Paris at the, uh, at the at between the walls there. Uh, what do you call it? The, yeah, we could have something there. And we could have sent something in St. George, I don't know, in front of my house there where it says St. George, the family village. That could be an electronic screen now. And in Burford, right where the cenotaph was, that could be an so we would need to purchase like maybe six big screens, all with the same information, because people from Burford do want to go to Applefest, and people from Applefest want to find out what's going on for springtime in Paris. But that's a big investment for the county. And, and if you want that to be done, that has to be a proposal to the county. That It wouldn't be a budget line, but it would be a hefty grant. But I'm not saying it can't be done, and I'm not saying that's not the way we should do it. I think it might be the way we should do it. But it needs to be bigger than brochures and pamphlets. If you want us to take the blame for it, or the flack for it, not being right or on time, it needs to be somebody's job with, okay. a, with an well, email address. It came, that was the huge thing that came out of that meeting. So when we go back to the next yeah. meeting, we can present that that's... It, it, it's more of a neighborhood thing. Well, if it's a neighborhood thing, then it's not a county thing. So I think it's you have to decide. It's bigger than a neighborhood. Yeah. Go ahead, Kathy. Um, so we were we were discussing this the last two BIA meetings because the lack of cohesion. Um, so I do think it is bigger than just a neighborhood thing, but the asset, like you said, it is an investment, but the return comes from building more tourism um, and local tourism. That is our missing link. That's our deficit right now is we, we put so much money on outward tourism, and you heard us speaking about this last night, um, but trying to get locals to shop downtown and, and invest money back everywhere throughout the community, it's really tough. There's a lot of newcomers that have never even heard of Applefest. Or, you know, I, have, I know people that have moved to Drumbo and Burford that they're like, there's a Paris Fair, and it blows your mind. So there is a disconnect. So. Uh, an, an option, a theoretical option, and I'm, I, I really don't know what the, the solution would be specifically, but perhaps the color coding concept. Um, I've seen other communities work this into their community calendars where if you are interested in something that's coming from a nonprofit, you want to support your church, or um, you're looking for a, a recreational outdoor thing, there's a code or a color representing that thing, like Ford Garth. You know, you're looking for a canoe trip, it's blue. If you're looking for something nature-based, it's green. For something church, perhaps it's purple. That sort of thing, right? So that you can you can pay attention to the color coding. It simplifies it mentally. Um, so that that's a suggestion. So that it doesn't get too clamored. If you had it on a, a simplified screen, it would be thin bars. I'm thinking bus station, train station, airport. It's very thin bars. You can see the airlines broken down by colors, that sort of thing. Kind of the same concept here. And to speak to um, the screens, you may not want to put a screen outside for fear of vandalism, which we just saw with the bathrooms. Great job, everyone. Um, so you may not want to put it outside. So putting it in the municipal building up against the window, that it could face outwards and it's protected inside of a building, but it faces the core of downtown, something accessible for everyone. Just a thought. Or Wincy Mill. People from Harley and Harrisburg never come in here. 
No, but like there must be some kind of central point in each community. I haven't been to Harley in a really long time, but thinking of downtown Burford or downtown St. George, there must be some place that it, the there, library, it the arena. Yeah. Right. Well, you can, exactly. get there, you can get there on a bus, like Grant County bus service here. It'll, it'll go over Harley. Yeah, just some kind of yeah, physical yeah, spot where we can have those screens. And maybe it isn't in every little spot. Maybe we don't have one in Harley. Maybe it's based on population density, you know? It, it's a bigger issue than I know. Madam but Manager, I think we should give it to Donna to take back. <laughs> It's big. It could be big, but it could also be great. It could be. I, I think uh, it's an asset. I don't like when people are talking badly of the county for something that we we maybe, and I'm not saying that you did talk badly about it, but I don't like it to be out there that the county isn't doing something right when we could, when we don't know there's a problem. I've never heard of this before. Today is the first time I've heard that people don't know stuff. I'm assuming do, people do, are out there all day. Do, do you know do you know Risha Burke? Risha Burke, that name? No. No, okay. No. I, 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 I just never, really, truly, today's the first day that I didn't think we were doing something very well. Sorry to well, disappoint. No, it's okay. But it's good to communicate and, and share what the concerns are from, I mean, it was a very diverse group of people that were there, and um, there a lot of them were fairly recent newcomers, and that's how they feel. So if we're going to make the community inclusive and welcoming for everybody, if they feel a disconnect, um, and some of some of our own residents don't know what's going on, you, we have to find some way of making it happen. This is how you make it better. Like, giving feedback from your work, if you're doing things in the library, or asking if you need to do a new survey, if you can't see things, or if you can't see people, then how do you make the space? We're asking for money from the library. We <laughs> yes. want to know how deep your pockets are. Did, did you have any idea that this was so, so not? Sorry, I've heard bits and pieces from people just kind of when I was out knocking on doors, but, um, but yeah, like I, I didn't, I, until I heard the feedback from that meeting, um, from some of the others that attended, that was the first that it come in the big scale. Yeah, I, I'm a little... Have a chat with Lucas. He was yeah. there. Have a chat with John Bell. He was there. Um, it, it, it is bigger than you think. <laughs> That's all I should and, say. And we should work in the community a lot, not just in the organization. Well, let, let's let the next okay. couple of weeks here be a little bit hectic staff-wise. Okay. The next couple of weeks are going to be a little... And I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I just no, need no. to be aware. We need to know before we can fix it. One second, LA. I just, I can play that last little bit. I mean, no disrespect, but this is, of course, the topic of that. Like, the fact that the community group wants to make a discussion that we should make an official presentation. And, you, and I mean, we're, you two and the group are just kind of here to say we should do this, we should do this. Let them do the presentation to us, and that's what we really want. We're just sitting here spitballing and have no idea if that's what's going to play out. Yeah. I, I, I think it's just not our place to be in that type of discussion. Okay, Catherine. Sorry, Catherine, can you use your microphone? <laughs> they're, sorry. Um, they're, they're bringing the people together so that they can collect the data, so that they can put together the presentations. That's why um, Lucas and John were there, to kind of be a representation of that. Same with myself, so I could present this back to the BIA and have it as a point of discussion for growth, right? Because we're in this great transition right now. Um, and it's not something that we're trying to propose. It's something like we're, we're planting the seed, something to consider. And then when they come to us to make a presentation, then we're like, we gotcha. We've already put some thought towards this, and now we can have a, an educated discussion. So, Donna. This is all great information, and I will definitely uh, be taking it back to talk to whom I'm not sure yet, but I, <laughs> I will definitely uh, bring it back to have a discussion with Allison and other staff. But in the meantime, just so this group knows, we do have a, a TV that Tourism owns in Wincy Mills. So if there is a way that we can even 
use it as a pilot and try and get you know uh, an update of events and things like that are happening, we can we can try and use that one TDP screen as a pilot in that one location and see how that works. So I will definitely um, bring that discussion back to to uh, staff as well. Okay, thank you. The other quick thing I just wanted to mention previously uh, when we had our TAC meetings at the beginning of a term. Um, we had what we felt what should be our focus and people would brainstorm as to um, what our focus should be over the next four years and then we would narrow it down to perhaps four things. So um, if you could think about that for the next meeting, um, what you would like to have the group focus on um, and it, it can have 10 or 12 things and then we can have a discussion and to narrow it down. Is that right, Garth? That's what we've done in the past? I think that's a good idea still to continue? Okay. All right. Um, LA. <laughs> It's for like the recording and everything though. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sit back here then so I don't yell at you. Um, the first, the Ontario, the 55 plus games, we had typically, I think previously had the, the winter version and now it has changed. So does that mean the winter version is now dead and it's completely changed to the summer? Um, we lost the winter games due to COVID right. twice. Um, the second thing, again, I don't know if this is the place to discuss it. Um, I'm not sure who's all familiar, how familiar you are. The Hamilton Bulldogs are moving to the city of Brantford beginning this, this upcoming year, and it's awesome for, for the city and the county. Um, I put my deposit down for season tickets already. I can't wait for them to come here. I know it's a city-focused thing. Have the county been involved with any kind of uh, promotion, sponsorship? Should we be involved with that of any kind? I think it's great for the area and wh where I'm coming from is a longer term view. They're only supposed to be here for three years. This is an awesome opportunity to show the OHL that the county and the city can host a team full time long term. And so I don't know if the county, the city, the Paris should be working with the city, the county in general to try to figure out a way to promote slash sponsor in some capacity uh, to prove that we can handle this full time. Through you, Madam Chair, um, <clears throat> we're trying to we're trying to keep away from it right now because the city is getting a lot of in a lot of a lot of controversy, um, putting the renovation money to the civic center when there's people dying on the street, and because there's a mayor's task force which includes me and the mayor, I'm stepping back from it because I didn't get uh, a chance to vote on the team. I would have voted for the team to come but I didn't get a chance, but my name is being dragged through the fact that we're putting over $4 million, started at $3 million, now it's $4 million, when there's people lying on the streets in Brantford who couldn't come up with the money for that, but now they've come up with the money for this. So there's going to be a cooling down period of about six months. All that will hit letters to the editor, and it will be front page probably another couple of times, and then we'll show our support once we're not, we're not tied to a decision that doesn't seem right to the people of Brantford right now. So we don't need it to spill over to the county of Brant right now until it is a better news story. But we will support it. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any other comments? Garth, sorry. Oh, I actually had a, a question for Donna. Donna, uh, two things on signage. You know, you're talking about maybe a new tourism information at the Wincy. 
that's one thing we need is signage point where that tourism information will be. And the second thing is actually spun off from BIA that caught my attention last night. There was no signage pointing for newcomers where the free parking is in other spots. And I thought that was a very valid point. When you drive into Paris, you don't know where the parking is. Uh, those two simple signages would really give us a, a unique edge. And the last thing I think is important is uh, I would like to see the Paris BIA give a merchant perspective of the impact of tourism in the county on them. Um, I really picked that up last night and it's, it's something we, we need to have hear a voice from them on the, on the issues they're seeing. It was, it was very good that I was able to attend last night. Thank you, Guy. Okay. A any other comment, Catherine? Did you want to? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, anybody else have anything else to say? No? Okay. Then um, I'll let you um, know that our next meeting is Thursday, March the 2nd, here, 10 o'clock. And um, thank you for coming. And can I have a motion to adjourn?